verlof de morgen voor mij. Your mother loves you, she's glad to be with you. We used to go along the sea walls. We used to go in the prominent guys and see all the beautiful flowers. Then we'd go for a stroll into Bel Air. Can I just stay home? It's only a half day. Is that that? You better keep your mouth shut. It's Cody, it's Nathan. Where's he at? Right by the tracks. Because of your brother, we're suspended. Anthony! Get away! This ain't no time for me. You warned me. I know! Who would have found you? Nobody messes with family, man. I want to tell you, while Port of Spain is the Mecca, you have uh, carnival celebrations taking place in different areas of the country. I'm of all, I'm all the belief that if most societies did engage in a bit of carnival, you would have a lot less social tension. But you must really try to talk to some Trinidadians before you leave and you would realize many of them are ignorant about the historical roots of carnival. But what is carnival? I mean, what's the meaning of it? How did it come about? I don't know how it come about and what it is. To me, it's just people in the road jumping up, whining, jarring themselves listening to soca music. Because um, with some of the... I, that one I don't know. What was the message long ago? I don't know, I wasn't there. <laughs> but I can tell you the message today. Um, the message is today is the, the, the women are getting more nudists and stuff. Uh, I, 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 I can't tell you how the message long ago. Can you explain the origins of part of slavery? I'm not too completely sure of the origins, but it's more like slavery days when we were emancipated. Carnival was initially what the slaves did to mock the French planters. Carnival is a festival that precedes Lent in Trinidad and Tobago. Literally, the word carnival means farewell to the flesh. What it amounts to is absolutely total abandonment, the adoption of a very free spirit, letting your hair down as a last minute engagement in fun and frolic 
before going into the Lenten season, which is a, se uh, a season of fasting that takes you to the Passover and the death and resurrection of Christ and so on. Carnival is not just about costumes. It's not just about playing on the street. What we need to understand is that Carnival incorporates the marsh on Carnival Sunday. It incorporates Panorama, the steel pan music, and then the parade of the band's Carnival Monday and Tuesday. Because many of the, the literature, it is stated that it came when the French settlers came here. Now in 1797, we had a major group of French people coming to Trinidad and Tobago um, from the French islands. And of course, they brought with them their traditions and their cultural um, bores, etc. However, the Africans who were living in the country, who were enslaved and living in Trinidad and Tobago on various plantations, and the enslaved Africans who were brought in by the French planters when they came in, they also brought with them their traditions and they fought to have carnival. The language of carnival at that time was the patois. And a lot of the, a lot of the, the people involved in it, traditionally, Dame Lorraine, as a French woman, they used to dress up a woman with a big bottom. It would be taking the mickey out of the, the mistress of the plantation, mm -hmm. you see. The French word for devil is diable. In patois, that becomes jab, you see. The other one, the very famous one is the jab. Molassi, it means the molasses devil, the fella covered in molasses. That, it used to be at the end of the crop, you see, so he would be covered all in black, you know, the color of molasses. And he's jab molasses, he's the molasses devil. Some devils use different colors of paint as opposed to molasses to invoke fear in spectators. Blue devil is a character that comes out on Carnival Monday that is capable of taking you to hell. Now, being, being a blue devil or a jab molasses, is a whole secret. Your mother don't know is you, your father don't know is you, your brother and sister don't know is you. You whine, you get on, you behave bad, you do just what you're not supposed to do as a human. If they don't pay you, well, it's not how you're bad. You understand? You must pay the devil. If you don't pay the devil, he will take you to hell. It is impossible to have carnival without seeing a devil, and there are also no pretty costumes of mass without having the dirtiness of Juve. Wow, Juve is the official beginning of carnival. Jersey mud, body oil. paint, oil, cocoa, powder, sailor. That is midnight robber, that is Juve. Starts from 4 a.m. in the morning, officially. Juve is the people's mass. The people who can't afford the, the elaborate costumes. Participating in Juve is significantly cheaper than taking part in mass on Carnival Monday and Tuesday. For Juve, it was three, three seventy-five TT money. Uh, fifty dollars. Uh, fifty US, US dollars. Like Juve, three fifty TT dollars. Yeah. Yet still they could garner up like about 20 to 25 people of their friends and friends of friends and they come in one, one place at one time and they, they have a real of time ball. The Juve is the, is the most uncommercial, unregulated aspect of the carnival so in many ways it's still the most real. Early morning of Carnival Monday, that tends to be the old mass character where you would, see the, you would see some wild Indians, you might see some bats, you would probably see some dragons, you would probably see some midnight robbers. And then you have the traditional mass, which would be Carnival Monday and Tuesday. And this mass is more or less a very colorful mass, pretty mass, where you would see beads, sequins, feathers, fiberglass. You know, we, as, as, as a child, my parents would take me to, to, to see Carnival and it was something that we look forward to because each band had a different portrayal and it told a different story. Mass was really for me. Mass is like, you know, with these costumes and fully clothed thing, that is my kind of mass, not this kind of mass. The mass today, it lacks the historical themes. The hist historical themes that we would have seen in the 1940s, 1950s, 1960s. Images from Africa, from Greece, from Rome, from early England. We don't see that again. 
I know, I think as the 80s and 90s hit, we started just stripping off everything one by one. Not only just our roots, but our clothes too, so. Normally, on um, Carnival Monday and Tuesday, when the organizers of these bands, the producers, they read for, for you what is the band is supposed to be about. I look at the costume, I say, oh, all right. All I'm seeing is a beaded bikini, okay, a bra top, and a, a pants that look like a bikini bottom, and um, a band, hand band, leg band, and shoes, and normally some type of headpiece and a standard. I love the female body more than anybody else, but I, for God's sake, how much of that you could look at <laughs> on, on, on Carnival? Hundreds and hundreds of people displaying the same type of costuming, and I'm told it is, it is um, something from Fiji, it's Phoenicians, it is Showcase, it is a Flamingo, it is... But I see no great evidence of that. Now, grant you, not all of the bands. Trinidad and Tobago, um, you know, has uh, has not a, uh, or does not have a very good image um, because you know the isolated cases here of especially foreigners being victims of crime, you know, it receives a lot of publicity abroad. Media now, the world is open. It's a, a free informational network. So you can't really blame people that they watch the news and hear, wow, 18 murders in 43 days or something like that. You can't blame people for being scared. Homicide are one of the major offenses that um, has our attention at this point in time. The country is going to grow in pain because we are really a young republic, we are a young country. You know, this happens and then it tempers down once we put things in order and in place to ensure that it goes down, you know. So maybe a couple of years from now you'll be alarmed at how sharply the, the crime rate has dissipated. This same violence is apparent during Carnival. There are the negatives, the people who pick pockets, um, the people who probably um, cannot control their behavior when they take in alcohol. When them guys and them drink the liquor, it's a little violence, you know what I'm saying? A little small violence. Yeah, that's what causes it, more or less you're intoxicated. Some people just bad. I mean, it have criminals in between the carnival and you wouldn't be able to differentiate who is who. They're drinking to a point where they can't handle this up. You know, and they feel like, I have a gun in my way, so I have a knife in my pocket, I'm a bad boy, I can do what I want. You have more stab wounds, chop wounds from fights, and you usually have gunshots also. The police force has methods of protecting the public, even more so during the festival. As the carnival period starts, over two or three weeks before, we are actually contributing police strengths to these cultural events to protect law-abiding persons. The initiatives that we actually put in place, it is done pre-carnival and post-carnival. Three passengers could only mean three passengers. This specify the amount of passengers. Surveillance, um, officers working, um, covertly in bands. What our responsibilities are, really, is A, to ensure that the carnival route is sanitized from vehicles, from any sort of vehicles, because the parade route is strictly for masqueraders. And what we also do is that persons who are not involved in the festival, we have to ensure that they go to work and to their homes or their other recreational activities free. Oh, well, free of any sort of encumbrances. When we do a post-mortem of the event, the information, once it is analyzed to see whether we missed anything, whatever solutions or responses for the, 
following year, that is implemented. By having a set strategy, law enforcement ensures that violence does not stop masqueraders from having fun. This year, Carnival, the police had everything under control, so crime was and all of that. But I hope they have the same thing next year, please go too. From, from my point of view, it was good. I did not see any problem. It was a safe one this year, very safe compared to other times. It was really good. Yeah. There was a lot of like police presence, so I felt very safe. The government had stamped down on crime by ensuring that all the people who come to Carnival are searched. Though crime remains a problem in the country, each year it dissipates around carnival time. You know, in recent years, when we have the least murders, it's during the carnival period. I don't know if the criminals are playing mass, you see, so they have no time to kill on those days. But it looks like the criminals as well take a break for carnival. For everyone. I don't know why they take a break all year. It's very rare. Very rare, you will find anything during the carnival season, anything carnival related violence taking place. There may be a 1%, 1% incident, you know and I'm saying incident. I believe that I'm not being unpatriotic or not nationalistic but the truth is the truth that there, there are some aspects of carnival that is negative people jump and whine and curse and over intoxicate that is what carnival does you so they get rid of carnival it's like there is one sin they wouldn't be committing and their madness wouldn't take place there's a certain spirit of, of freedom that promotes that promotes a great de degree of sexuality within the society it is not uncommon for men and women to be more sexually active during this time of year. Hedvig is a young woman from Sweden who participated in Carnival. We caught up with her online through Skype to hear her experience. It was pretty late, like or early, early in the morning. We had been dancing and partying for, for hours, so I can't really blame, <laughs> blame what happened to me on, on alcohol, unfortunately. Um, what I know about my baby's father is, um, it's a bit embarrassing to say, but I don't know much about him at all. I know his name and I know his face and we're Facebook friends. He was on holiday too when we met, yeah. <laughs> He's got um, dreadlocks. He lives in North Carolina. I don't know if he is completely American, if he got you know, Trinidad roots to the big roots, I, I'm not sure. When we first, when I first came back to Sweden, we kept talking online and a couple of times on the phone. But I pretty, pretty soon found out I was um, pregnant. I think after he realized that I was keeping the baby, he stopped talking to me. He did not want to have the baby. He said he couldn't afford it. I don't really speculate too much in him and like what he feels and what he does and what he wants because it's me and the baby now and and I know that he's kept me as a friend on Facebook even though it sounds ridiculous it's still a sign that he doesn't hate me. Unplanned pregnancy is not the only thing revelers need to worry about. People contract STDs all during the year but during kind of a time because of promiscuity. If you have taken in enough alcohol to the extent that it affects your judgment, it might affect how you decide to approach sexual intercourse in terms of knowing your partner, in terms of negotiating condom use. During this time, there are a lot of advertisements talking about the dangers of HIV and AIDS. The country has become aware that HIV is on the rise and has taken steps to alleviate the problem. And in HIV prevention and in HIV education, we link alcohol use with HIV. The National AIDS Coordinating Committee Secretariat is the body in Trinidad and Tobago that's responsible for coordinating the national response for HIV. The figures are in fact increasing in our 15 to 25 age group. 
Our highest figure is in the 15 to 49 age group, which is our working population. You can estimate whether pregnancies are linked to carnival because the pregnancies last nine months. You can, to some extent, link other sexual transmitted infections. But if you remember that I said someone can be infected with HIV and not know for 10 years, for five years, for six months, then how are we truly going to say that HIV rises after carnival? Up to this time, we can't prove that scientifically. The important thing is that citizens are aware of the disease. People have the information. But I guess a, a human factor from all of this is that you have information and you know, but then you think, well, it's not going to happen to me. You would see free condoms and things being given out. Secondary school students and things being told about the dangers of this disease. But the government and other NGOs have been doing a lot to deal with that. They have a lot of information on the electronic and print media. And I think people are happening to the call to be careful to use condoms and all that. very sad. The costumes are getting smaller and the price is getting higher. You are paying $2,000, $3,000 for simply a little piece of cloth, colored cloth. 500 euro. It's like 500 euros for a woman? Yeah. And how much for a man? $250? Oh, $250, 300 Yeah. Um, it cost me TT $4,000, which is really a bottle of water. Um, and for Carnival, it was 567 in the US. <laughs> yeah. I think it was 29. Oh, 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 US, American Okay, definitely it has changed. It's more expensive. The large expenditure for the costumes and fits may lead some to neglect necessities. People like Carnival so much. It's almost like an addiction. They are taking their hard-earned money and they are using that for, to buy an expensive Carnival costume. They are using that to buy alcohol at a Carnival fit. They are using that to pay for tickets for their friends to go to a carnival fete. They might have some misguided persons who would actually believe that carnival should be a priority in their lives. They wouldn't say, you know, I can't afford carnival this year, you know. Carnival will pass. I will save up my money for next year. Definitely. <laughs> I definitely spend away too much. Some of them save their money from before. Some of them may go and take a bank loan because the banks will, of course, try to attract you for the loans to get your thing. Yes, it is possible to get a loan specifically for Carnival from certain banks in the country. Yes, I have a few partners. For, that's for the costume itself, you know. Costumes tend to be a little bit of money, so they take out a loan for the costumes. Money that has, should have been spent on groceries, money that have been, should have been spent on school books, is being misdirected into buying Carnival costumes and paying for Carnival fets. Um, you know, it comes around once a year and you'd find that a lot of people, like myself, do the same thing. I will certainly not be telling people not to enjoy themselves on, on, at carnival time. What I will say is be choosy. What you have to do is be careful. I mean, around Christmas time, instead of buying gifts for everybody, buy gifts for half of what you, you normally buy for. And that will happen anyway. I don't think I have to give much advice. The day after carnival is Ash Wednesday, which is not a public holiday in Trinidad and Tobago. So what does this do for the productivity of the country? The workforce is affected and it is very unfortunate because as you know this is a developing country, right? And too often after Carnival on Ash Wednesday, those who participate don't go to work. Normally for Ash Wednesday, that's a time they call it, uh, they, they actually they call it Ash Wednesday cool down. That's what they call it. You know, we, 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 we are on the road. Monday and Tuesday, you know, because Carnival, that's, it's a lot of walking, you know, a lot of chipping to the music. 
And because of that, they just go to the beaches and relax themselves. It's a, you have to remember Trinidad is a more, it's a laid back country. What are you doing here today? Relaxing. Just relaxing? Yeah. More carnival, they, they go long. Bosses expect that you come to work, but they, they know that Ash Wednesday that they will not have a full um, a range of employees on that day. So they would um, adjust themselves. So I got into work, I had on clothing, and then at some point in time I was missed. I said, gentlemen, ladies, see you all. Did you have work today? Yeah. Was that a day <laughs> off, or did you have to report to work, but you just had to take the day off? Well, I just signed in and just, you know, you know, Trini, you know, we just with you. They ain't foreign, you know. They ain't foreign, you know. Look at fire, you know. You just sign in and say, all right, tomorrow. And your boss is okay with that? Yeah, man. I got that. Look at it. Some of them take the rest of the week off. So from Carnival Monday to Friday, they take time off from work. I call my supervisor already. And then I come in the open Monday. This, of course, slows down business, slows down productivity. Basically, in Trinidad, say about 30% would definitely come to work. Percentage. It percentage could be like um let's say about 30 40 percent like um probably the banks and and of course these um these services like the firemen and, and the um, police service the services they have to go to work and even before carnival monday many people take time off to collect their costumes that's a big thing if they want to take a half day or hold it they go and collect your costume if you go to a fete in the night next day you don't want to go to work you have a hangover so, and if you go to four fets, well, those are four or five working days affected right there. I don't know how I got the time to be in a band. I hope they didn't see me. <laughs> but I was in a band both days. But I worked, eh? Okay. I was in a band both days, but I worked. I don't know how I did it, but I did it. Ah. So if, if at all the video is played and, I, and I'm seen, it wasn't me, it was somebody else. Oh, okay. Looks like me, came from overseas, it wasn't me. <laughs> so, you see, this sort of mentality, this so-called carnival mentality, affects our workforce, but it is also affects our lifestyle, where we pattern our lives around carnival. You must be aware of the economic crisis that's taking place globally. And Trinidad and Tobago, like other Caribbean countries, and I suppose Tobago more so, saw a decline in tourism, but not at Carnival. I think it was something I've never seen before, so it was uh, really great. Well, it was a lot of fun, a lot of drinking. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was a great experience to come here and see everything that I've been reading about and seeing on television. You know, I live in Miami, Fort Lauderdale area. For the past 18 years I've been down here, every carnival, never miss one. Carnival is one of the best events for this country. It brings in a lot of tourists, brings in a lot of um, currency, different amount of people. Economically, there's investment taking place, there's revenue coming into the country too. By virtue of tourism, you have the um, hotels, bed and breakfast uh, facilities, uh, Tobago. This data given by the Central Statistical Office of Trinidad and Tobago, the CSO, shows that in 2009, the country had the least number of visitors over the last seven years. Still, tourism is welcomed as entrepreneurs especially see economic gains during the season. So a lot of times, you have to remember too that the lower class benefit from these tourists who buy these products. Some people make a lot of money from carnival. Business people sell a lot. People who sell on the streets, the tourists go and buy a lot of these items, right? Chains and necklaces and that sort of thing. Snow cone, be it roti, be it some soup, right? Crab and callaloo. Well, it's affect me in a positive way in terms of business because they have when people come down for the carnival, especially locals who, go, who live away and they come down, they take back all their, their um, local condiments and preservatives. You know, normally like they would take the pepper sauce, the seasoning, the jams, the mango, kuchula, and things like that. 
and sales increased over hundred percent for me at least around that time. Well, my business, yes, it is helping a lot because I deal with scraps. There is like the old like cans and the beer cans and stuff like that. That helped me a lot because my customers come to me, okay? Yes, it helped me a lot. And it helped me a lot in the next aspect. Or whatever I should tell you. You ladies. <laughs> Yeah, it does. Yeah, like. People who bring out these bands, they make a lot of money and they employ a lot of staff also. Kenroy Dog is a costume designer. You know, sometimes you go to see with master your mind and you dream something. You get up and you sketch it and be done. So roughly, I'm uh, designing costume about 29 to 30 years. As a youth man growing up, I um, watch Bonanza. And I kind of get to like the Indians in Bonanza who are fighting against the cartwrights and them. So I always say when I get big, I'll play like an Indian, like play like something from Bonanza. The name of my band, the title of my band is um, Mass Princess Storm. Pascal's livelihood depends on carnival activities. He's a plastic presser. Plastic form is the art of vacuuming plastic into shapes. You take the, the object that you're going to make, you put it on the, the plate, you send it down with the pneumatic, you bring the plastic on, you put it onto the machine, you lock it down, you bring the heater over it, you heat it. Once it's ready to go, you move the heater back, you bring the, the plate up, and you just draw the vacuum. It removes the air from between the plate and the, the plastic and it, it closes into all the cavities, and you have what you want. I do plastic forming for all of the Caribbean, Canada, London, uh, anybody that asks me. Most of the time, I don't even know where it's going. Even Spooky, the Blue Devils member, benefits from the publicity of Carnival. I've trained people from Trinidad, Tobago, England, one or two in Germany, I've trained at least a hundred people. Um, being a Blue Devil is like the most amazing character. You know, it, it is so amazing. It gives you this feeling in your heart that you're doing something good and something positive. Although you're being a, a devil. <laughs> While there are foreign dollars that enter the country, not everyone thinks the event brings in as much money as people tend to suspect. So there are just a few people who may really benefit from it. Now, there's a lot of spending of money around carnival time. So it's, I go to a FET, what we call a, a FET is a big party, and I spend money, but then I don't go to a FET in April. Uh, if, if that FET were in April, I would probably go. But that money is my money and it's internal, and it's, that, it's not that I would not have spent that money on something else. When I spend it on the FET, it's that I do not spend it on something else uh, uh, in, during, during the year. So what happens is that the people who run the FETs, the people who sell in the stalls and so on, they make money from me rather than the person from my own tongue. But then that's simply a redistribution and that's not necessarily an addition to the spending. talk about carnival, you talk, it's such a multi-dimensional, multi-faceted um, industry um, in the cultural arena. We are talking about the, the mass itself, then we are thinking, talking about the music, we're talking about the steel band, we're talking about calypso. Nowadays you would hear more or less music and you, you can't decipher the lyrics. You're not sure what the calypso and is singing, you're hearing this upbeat tempo. And it, it is good because it's, it gets you in the mood to move, but you are not understanding. So therefore, the, the purpose of the, the Calypso and Soka is me merely for partying purposes. It has lost its, its, its potential uh, um, uh, um, to unify the society and to motivate the society to do good. I used to go to the Calypso tents regularly. I stopped going because I don't like what they sing there now. There are certain racial slurs in some of these songs that I, I have very little tolerance for. We need to see if certain Calypso should not be aired, creating racial divisions. 
Though Calypso may take the blame for certain ethnic tugs of war, race is not a big issue on the island. You know, it's not like other parts of the world where you have um, ongoing rivalry with the ethnic groups. Here we live in peace and harmony. You see, Trinidad is extremely cosmopolitan, as you know. And really, no group is left out of carnival. Some people, some societies, do experience a carnival, but the divisions are there. When people gyrate mindlessly over those two days, people find themselves hugging people that they are not aware of, relating to people that they don't know. People find themselves making new friends. People put aside the racial hurdle. That's what carnival is about. It's about letting loose. Um, it's about an emancipation of freedom and bringing together many ethnicities, races and cultures. And it's the only day all the people do get together, red, white and black, rich and poor. So that kind of vibes is a good vibes. I mean, it'll bring out a lot of people. Yeah, we go, we come together, you know, and have a wonderful time. Yeah, yeah, for real. The liquor, I love that a lot. Okay, the ladies, I love that a lot. Well, I'm one of those persons who believe that carnival really breaks down the ethnic divide and breaks down all kinds of barriers. It breaks down racial barriers, it breaks down income barriers, it breaks down barriers related to political conflict, it breaks down barriers related to geographical orientation. It doesn't matter what part of Trinidad you come from, you know, I believe that Carnival does that, and that's what you see when you see the mass. Carnival has allowed many foreigners to know about Trinidad and Tobago. It has put the country on the map. How will the event change in the future? What would be Carnival like in 100 years? What would be Carnival like in 200 years? Right? And I want to believe that it would probably actually see, you might even see topless women, right? Maybe just with some paint and ink. You're going to have some of the traditional material and some of the traditional aspects done away with. You're going to have more DJ, disc jockey kind of music. It is something that is degenerating. It's a, it's a hard, harsh word, a degeneration. It's something like a cultural regression, which is very sad. You're going to have more fets. It's quite possible that carnival will be extended. I am sure that we are going to see a change in the future in the types of designs that um, we have at present. The uniqueness of Trinidad's carnival is slowly being lost. It has been eroded simply because of the lack of planning, the lack of organization, the lack of dedicated persons. So I'm seeing a far larger program of events, a far more spectacular show. And let's not kid ourselves, Carnival is not going to go anywhere. It would simply become massive and go forward in that respect. In order to keep Trinidad and Tobago's Carnival unique, the citizens need to be educated on the roots of the event. Because many of the young people today may not know of the history of Carnival in the way that we do it. Many people may not know of the people who have contributed positively to Carnival. Because remember to educate the people about Carnival, you will have to introduce it into the cur curriculum of the primary and secondary schools. There are also other issues that everyone, not only the government, can take into consideration. When we think about Carnival and we think about the negativity around Carnival, I think all of us in Trinidad and Tobago should be looking at how can we decrease that negativity? How can we make Carnival safer? How can we um, educate our young people to know they are beautiful, they are talented, they don't need Carnival to give an extra display of either their bodies or um, anything that can impact on their lives negatively. The real benefit of Carnival would be to teach people to use it for national success. Use it economically. Use it for equity. Use it for individual rejuvenation and social rejuvenation. And also to guide our young people to protect themselves. 
and to promote the positive parts of carnival because it is part of who we are, it is part of our culture, and I think we can continue to work to make it um, a much better festival, uh, an improved festival, one that continues to bring um, joy to the people who participate. But what this government has to do and what the organizers have to do, they have to try to bring back the beauty of carnival. They have to bring back the historical themes. They have to make carnival something in which the whole world could really appreciate. Too often we fail to realize that Notting Hill Carnival in England could gather a bigger crowd. Caribana in Toronto, Labor Day in New York, the Miami Carnival, the Carnival in Rio de Janeiro. These are carnivals that are competing with us and these are carnivals that the world know more about than sometimes during that carnival. It is one of our gifts to human civilization. Anything that can bring people together in the way that carnival does is a gift to the global community. We must exploit and use its positive aspects for the good of mankind. But freedom of speech and the freedom of costumes, the, the display, we also need to set certain guidelines and boundaries. That is the only way we could save our Calypso, we could save our carnival for the next 100 years. My wine is better than your wine. When they mix the soca and the dancehall, get them a wine about the natural. So when I wine up on you, wine up on me, got shake everybody, let me see. When I mix the soca and the dancehall, get them a wine about the natural. So when I wine up on you, wine up on me, got shake everybody, let me see. Yeah. I got a look so fine, chop like a bit, and everybody too kind. Yeah, give me all the cock, wine on me, low on your wine up on top. Elevate a ride on me, cook tick tock, give me rock wine like AMC again. So when you listen to this all I wanna feel the energy Just wind up your body girl, wind up your body for me When the journey man come in the complex All the man them see me start to get vexed Cause the girl them watching wanna get a flex After the dance she wants to get Say they wanna stick to me like crazy cool But it's so clean you just gonna have a clue This ain't no joke I'm talking to you girl When I get you in the mood you wanna be like shiny Here come for fighting, showing style in the flex like lightning shiny Girl love how I move, love how I groove And you know I get a mini moon like love like how I'm whining, like how I'm grinding, I'm flexing, time in Chinese Girl love how I move, what you tell them now? A1 love on them, a one shot out When you get them, come and spread them like what's out When you win Chinese, they don't want no other Want to see I look like Jet Li, brother Johnny man do it better, I rock the boat and them I call me the skipper Enough things I go on when I pull on me zip up Deal with them proper, they wanna be like shiny Yeah, kung fu fighting, showing styling, wet like what up? Shiny, girl love how I move the power for groove And you know I get a mini moon like Like how I whining, like how I grind and I hunt like Fire! Shiny, girl love how I move how are you, how are you, how are you say? I wanna make you wine, I wanna make you grind I wanna see you flex and jam it up Wanna see you move, I wanna see you groove Make you bump a bounce and bubble up Hot walk and wine, and that's the wine is fine Give me the temp and wine from me And I wanna hold on to you like in a Congo line Okay, I'll wind up your bumper Look that one, look at you, look at she All the gal them ask him of me, who me Chinese? No sympathy, me the gal escape like Houdini With Chinese dovers in Brahik Walk in the gal let me out and fight Look that one day, she body so tight She gonna leave with me tonight, she wanna be like Chinese Here come Kung Fu fighting, shouting, styling, wet like What up? Chinese Gal love how I move, love how I groove And they know I get a mini moon love Like how I whining, like how I grind And I hot like for ya Chinese Gal love how I move how are ya, how are ya, how are ya say? Say they wanna be like Amy Tellers wanna be like Play your haters wanna be like Homie the girl them feel right Say they wanna be like, be like, be like Say they wanna be like, they wanna be like They wanna be like, like the like, the like, the like, like, like The like, 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 like how I whining, like how I grind and I up like for ya Chinese, girl love how I move How are ya, how are ya, how are ya say Yo, me say big up for the out production Mr. Spine, Lord of the Time Mr. Spine, Lord of the Time Yo, you know what you Chinese, Chinese Ow, ow, ow Oh,
Everybody know it's King Silver KFC Lungs like Chinese, Chinese And you know it's a one in a million, one in a billion combination Chinese, you ready? Of course, don't need a reason to love carnival Don't need a reason to play mask Don't need a reason to jump and wave up and misbehave up and shake my cow Don't need a reason to love carnival Don't need a reason to jump in a band I just wanna jump and wave up and misbehave We are saying them I can't tell you why I love carnival, I love carnival I can't tell you why I just love it, I just love it